Hello and welcome to this free training series. I understand that COVID has affected all of us in some way. While for some it has completely changed their lives, for others it has meant that particularly their routines around their horses and riding have gone out the window. Have you found yourself with fewer and fewer opportunities to ride or sometimes even unable to see your horse? I know many of us have and it seems that this COVID induced chaos is far from over. If you've not ridden for a while because of this disruption to your routines or if you've found, as I know many have, that COVID has actually given you more time to evaluate your relationship with your horse and wonder if you could improve it, then this series is for you. Some of the things that have changed hugely during 2020 are our ability to take our horses out to compete for coaching or even to have coaches and trainers attend our properties. For many people I've spoken to, this has led them to truly understand just how responsible they are for their horse's behaviour. Our horses are learning all the time, whenever we're with them, and we need to make sure that they're learning what we want them to know. But how do we do this? How do we make sure that the lessons we're teaching are the right lessons and that the horse is actually understanding and absorbing the information? Hello, I'm Kate Fenner, and in this Masterclass training series, Three Steps to Your Perfect Post-COVID Horse Relationship, I'm going to show you how you can completely transform how you work with your horse, prioritizing relaxation and understanding and building your own confidence at every turn. I'm so pleased you're here because today we're gonna to talk about what is probably the most important and most overlooked aspect of horse training and riding, and that is relaxation. Riders across the world report that anxiety and shying or spooking are the most troublesome and unwanted, dangerous behaviors they experience. And many horses have now had a considerable amount of time off work because of COVID crisis, making this and the possibility of freshness or exuberance even more of a concern for riders. Further, as shying is often accompanied by a sudden change of direction and even more often a buck, it is the most likely behavior to unseat a rider. Over the three decades that I've been coaching riders and training horses, correctly addressing relaxation has been the one missing ingredient that when properly done has immediately stopped shying and transformed both horse and rider in ways they never thought possible. Do you ever worry about jumping on and going for a ride when your horse has been off for a while? Is your horse sometimes scared of its own shadow? Do you worry about going out on the trail in case you come across something unexpected? Or do you just wish your horse was a little less anxious or would seem to trust you more? Have you ever wondered if you're not good enough or experienced enough for your horse? and think you should send it out to a trainer to ride through it or to teach it what it needs to know to be a safe and enjoyable ride. Or perhaps you think you just need a bit more confidence and that the horse and a horse that's maybe been there done that. Look, if you answered yes to any of these questions, you're in the right place. In this masterclass, I'm going to explain how you can bring your horse back to work safely and also why horses shy, why relaxation is the pivotal component of successful training and riding, and how you can get relaxation in your horse and yourself without having to send your horse out or get a trainer in to come and train it for you. In this first video, I'm going to explain how I came to realize the importance of starting with relaxation and the journey I took to get there. In the second video, we'll discuss the engagement zone and working your horse and riding in what I call the bubble. In video three, we're going to use what we've learned to break a lesson down and teach your horse a really useful exercise. After this video, you'll be able to go out and teach this lesson yourself and I know you're gonna love it. And finally, in video four, I'm going to give you a roadmap to show you exactly how you can do this yourself. The roadmap is going to show you how you can teach your horse to do anything you choose using the building blocks we learn here. 
Whatever you want to teach your horse, the building blocks are the same. It doesn't matter if it's to walk calmly on the trail or do flying changes. This masterclass will show you those building blocks and how to implement them by breaking everything down into simple steps to make learning fun and easy for both you and your horse. Stick with me, it's going to be great. So where did I start? It was this very lack of relaxation that first led me in my journey over 20 years ago to find a better way to train and ride my horses. My horse was big in stature but sadly lacking in bravado. He wasn't too bad in the arena but he would shy so much out on the trail that I barely ventured out with him at all. One day in Singapore competing in a Rolex international dressage competition during my final ride of the program, a Kerr dressage to music event, I remember my Danish instructor yelling at me to pick him up, don't let him change frame as I left the arena, feeling like I was carrying around my 16 two hand off the track thoroughbred somehow between my legs wrapped around him and my hands holding his head and neck in place. Now we won this event and it was a large international competition. But in her comments, the judge said, horse looks beautiful on the outside, but I fear ready to explode on the inside. And she'd hit the nail on the head. As I released the rein after the final salute and left the arena, I knew there must be a better way. A way of training that focused first and foremost with relaxation and self-carriage, where I didn't have to hold my horse together where the horse understood and enjoyed the job, be it a dressage test, a jumping course or a trail ride. And while I knew that I could leave the arena on a long rein with my horse, I also knew there was no way I could take this horse with his current level of relaxation and understanding of what I was asking as a rider out on a trail ride through the jungle next door to the competition venue, for example. Or perhaps I could have, if I'd lunged him for 45 minutes first, but I didn't really want to exhaust my horse into submission. And that I still worried then, so what if I lunge him for 45 minutes today? Isn't he just gonna be a bit fitter? And how do I know when he's tired enough not to shy at things? And surely tomorrow, I'm just gonna to have to lunge him for longer. <laughs> no, I needed to find a system to educate my horse and thus allow my horse to relax. A system that made sense to me so that I could teach it to my horse myself and not have to rely on someone else to train my horse for me. And so my journey began. Just a few weeks after that Rolex International competition, my family and I were due to move to the US. And one thing about the States that I did appreciate was the fact that there were so many great trainers to learn from. So I set about to find the right one to help me learn and grow in the direction that I wanted for myself and my horses. I set out exactly what I was looking for and this is basically what it was. I wanted a horse that was relaxed and enjoyed what we were doing together, be it a com competitive riding, pleasure on the trail or just spending time together on the ground. I knew I still wanted to compete, but also I knew that I spent eight hours a day with my horses. And I was the only person at the time in Singapore that rode and competed in sh um, dressage, show jumping and polo, which were the only three disciplines on offer at the time. I also wanted a horse that didn't spook or shy, a predictable horse that I didn't feel that I was taking my life into my hands every time I mounted. Although I had to lunge before I rode just to take the edge off. I understood that to get relaxation I needed the horse to truly understand and be obedient to the cues I was given. I always found that much of what I was told by dressage instructors rather confusing and hard to define. Like what is a good contact? And how can you see or feel inside leg to outside rein? And if you're using those things when does the horse get a release of pressure? Another one's the half halt. Ask 10 different instructors to define a half halt and give you the cues and reasons for using it and you'll get 10 different answers. No wonder I had difficulty explaining that to my horse if I didn't really understand it myself. And surely 
Do I really need to rebalance my horse or tell him something's about to happen when I'm riding? Shouldn't my horse always be engaged with me as a rider and director of the energy? Really, particularly when I'm training something specific, I want my horse to always be in that place mentally. I call it the engagement zone or the bubble of communication, where the horse is in self-carriage and waiting for a signal from me to change something. I shouldn't need to wake him up first or rebalance him first, right? I wanted to be more confident as a rider, but understood this would first mean that I needed a more confident horse. Confidence is a funny thing and we talk about rider confidence a lot, but what is it really? I like to define it as knowing what might happen next. Now we can't always know exactly what might happen. I was riding in the arena not long ago and a kangaroo came out of nowhere, hopped over the fence right in front of my stallion, across the arena and out the other side of B. Did my horse react? No, other than raising its head towards and watching the path of the kangaroo and then out of the arena, it didn't really react at all. And we're going to talk about why he didn't react later in this masterclass. So confidence comes from knowing what might happen next. For the horse, confidence comes from understanding the cues and signals we use as riders, the correct use of combined reinforcement, breaking lessons down into manageable chunks, building on strong foundations, and teaching using clear, repeatable patterns. This will build a confident horse, and once I have that, I too can have confidence as a rider because my horse then becomes more predictable. I know what might happen next. Of course, the biggest and most important element of building rider confidence is training your own horse. And this is what this masterclass is all about. Showing you how you can train your horse using really simple step-by-step -step methods that are going to skyrocket your riding confidence. And don't worry, it's not a breathing exercise or relaxation technique um, or wishful thinking. It's evidence-based training that is both ethical and sustainable, that you and your horse will love, and it's the missing piece of the jigsaw. If you're anything like me, you've been searching for. After arriving in the States, I quickly started investigating trainers. There were a lot on offer, ranging from those slavishly following the German training scale to those talking about magic and harmony but very few met my selection criteria. John and Josh Lyons were the exception. There was no magic promise here. John Lyons only spoke about conditioned response, which is a learning theory term used to describe how you teach and how the horse learns during training. At the turn of the century, John was streets ahead of his time and he was the answer that I'd been looking for. Understand how the horse learns and how to break a lesson down so that you build confident and relaxed horses. This was gold and I knew that I had to do his course. Naturally, this was the most involved and lengthy course available and I ended up bringing a horse from Australia and another retired Argentinian polo pony from Singapore, both over to Colorado for eight months while I completed my training with John and Josh Science. What an incredible experience it was. It was just amazing in every way. I then moved to the UK, just outside Seven Oaks in Kent, and set up Equine Perfection, where I adapted everything I'd learned in Colorado to the horse rider population in England. I spent three years in the UK taking horses in for training, retraining, and starting under saddle. I traveled extensively around the country, conducting clinics and giving demonstrations. And in 2005, finally moved back to my home in Australia. Here, Again, I took horses in for training, continued with clinics and demonstrations, but I began to realize that those owners that really did their homework and started training their horses themselves, those engaged owners and riders had relaxed horses that loved to learn and were eagerly working through the new material. Whereas horses that were sent to me for training always left with aesthetically happy owners and performing over and above expectations, Almost always, a week, a month, or six months later, the owner ran into problems. The horse started to behave differently or fell back into old habits. 
Of course, the reason this was happening was obvious. Horses are not computers. You can't in simply install new software and off you go. Horses are not machines. They don't have buttons. They have learned responses to cues and they're learning all the time, whether we realize it or not. Those riders that hadn't trained their own horses didn't understand how their horses had learned the lessons and thus they didn't see things going wrong right at the beginning when the horse started trialing new responses. Let's say, for example, that you send me your horse to teach flying changes. I say, great, because that's one of my favorite lessons to teach and off I go and get started. Your horse has a good walk, trot and canter, but carries his head quite high in the canter, finding it difficult to sort of relax and lift his back, which is going to make the movement more difficult. And maybe the reason your horse is only changing in front and not behind when you ask for a flying change. No problem. I'll begin with teaching give to the bit. To teach the horse about self-carriage, softness in the bridle and frame, I'll then go on to teach shoulder control because I need to be able to stop the horse's shoulders moving before I teach hindquarter control. The flying change comes from the hindquarters, so that's what I need to be able to control. Finally, I teach hindquarter control and lateral work so that I'll have a good pattern to use to teach the flying changes. Okay, so I do all of that and in the end, after a week with me, your horse now travels in frame all of the time, is soft, light and responsive in the bridle and has great flying changes. Sadly, you take the horse home and continue to ride in the same way as you did before sending the horse out for training and pretty soon the postural and flying changes um, appear to have gone. So why is this? Well, when you train a horse, you build what I call a bubble of communication. This is where the horse is in the engagement zone. Something we'll talk about next time. And focused on you and the cues you're giving him or her. But that bubble belongs to the person that trained the maneuver. I can't give you the bubble. It's something you have to build yourself. Your cues are going to be slightly different from mine and your release is going to be slightly differently timed from mine. Horses come to the level of the rider. The horse may get a little better while it's out of the trainer um, and when it comes home to you, the two of you will equalize. You'll probably get a bit better and the horse will probably get a bit worse. But the horse won't make you better. And that's an important thing to realize here is that the horse is not your teacher, you're the horse's teacher. So it doesn't work like that. It's not the horse's responsibility to train you. It's your responsibility to train you, to train the horse. And this is why it's so important that you learn to train your own horse. Any horse will revert to the level of the rider. Even a schoolmaster will not continue to perform in the same way when the rider is unaware of how the lessons were taught in the first place. This is exactly what I found moving back to Australia and continued taking horses in for training. And it's why I stopped doing that entirely to devote all of my time to making real and lasting changes for horses and riders by teaching them to train their own horses. And like today's video, it's all about starting with relaxation. It took me a few years to really cement what I thought was missing from how we currently both train and ride horses. And in 2009, I decided to take a very deep dive into this and return to university to study equine science. Here, I deepened my understanding of horse anatomy, horse rider biomechanics, equine cognition and learning, and developed a great love for equine research. My honors project, which involved 100 horses, investigated how best to prepare a horse for a lesson and the horse's experience of learning a new task. I did some further research into the horse's experience of being ridden with a study about the effects of noseband tightness on both physiological and behavioral parameters. All of this led me in 2017 to enroll in a PhD in ethical equitation with the University of Sydney's Veterinary Science faculty. 
I submitted my thesis a few weeks ago, yay, and my project was called eBark, E-B-A-R-Q, which is a longitudinal investigation into the training, management and behaviour of horses. If you haven't seen eBark yet, I really encourage you to go along and get involved. It's a citizen science project and we really want your input and you can find it on my website or go to ebark.org. As I embarked on academia to find the answers that I'd been searching for, I also realised that I needed to be able to help more people by being able to teach them to train their own horses and so Can Do Equine went online. Today all of my training is available online and we'll talk a little more about this in the final video of this series. Now you'll remember that I promised you a roadmap for teaching your horse almost anything you wanted to learn in this masterclass and next time we're going to talk about how to break a lesson down, the four basic principles of learning, how to target relaxation and what is probably the most useful lesson I ever teach. I promise you it will change the way you understand training. You never knew it could be this easy or this fun and it's the first step you need to bring your horse back to work and to stop it shying if it does shy. Leave me a comment below and tell me about the horse you're going to be training during this masterclass. Also, has COVID affected you and your horse and how does it continue to do so? Once you've completed the masterclass, what activity are you really looking forward to doing with your horse that you haven't been able to before? For me, now that we're living here in Australia in an almost COVID normal world, fingers crossed, I'm looking forward to loading a horse or two on my trailer, doing some traveling and going trail riding. How about you? Tell me in the comments. Bye.